Welcome back, everyone. Here is a beautiful live shot over Century City. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for making us a part of your Saturday morning, and welcome back. One in six people get recurring headaches and 10% worldwide report suffering from migraines. Well, June is Headache and Migraine Awareness Month. And joining us this morning to dive deeper into all of this is Dr. Walid Wozni. He's a neurologist with Dignity Health Glendale Memorial. And doctor, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this very important issue. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Doctor, I was telling you uh, during the break that I personally suffer from migraines. I've been suffering since I was a teenager and so many people can relate to this. We wanna ask you just how calm common are the headaches and migraines and at what point do you see patients coming in to seek some help? Yeah, actually migraines are pretty common. Actually mm -hmm. one in five people do suffer from migraines. So um, I typically see my patients when they start suffering, you know, one or two headaches per, uh, per week mm -hmm. and sometimes four to five per month. Yeah, I mean, headaches and migraines, um, like I said, so many people experience them and the degree of pain uh, can range greatly. And I think a lot of people want to ask you, take advantage of the fact that you're here, what are the triggers? We hear, you know, a lot of things that can trigger headaches and migraines, but can you tell us what exactly are these triggers? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the major triggers that I see is food. Mm -hmm. uh, so certain, um, you know, people, certain cheeses, uh, certain wines like red wines typically uh, trigger migraines. Uh, chocolates is a big right, one. Right, yeah. Um, you know, exercise, uh, certainly strenuous exercise can trigger migraines. Lack of sleep, that's uh -huh. a big one. And uh, missing, missing meals, uh, a lot of people, if they miss uh, you know, their lunch, they can develop migraines. And uh, if you're a coffee drinker, you know, make sure you don't miss your morning joe. Yeah, <laughs> I can relate to that, absolutely. A lot of us on the morning show can relate to that. You know, you said food that we eat, the lack of sleep, and the coffee, right? Those are certainly big factors. Are there any other factors that can, can contribute to getting migraines and headaches? Change in weather, mm -hmm. uh, so a big one is like the Santa Ana winds. Um, uh, you know, that, that, I hear that a lot. Um, and, and stress, so stress can cause migraines as well. Stress is a big one, and here's another question. You know, we talk about headaches and migraines. Some people get headaches, but they don't suffer from migraines. Can you distinguish between the two? Yeah, so that's a great question. So migraines is typically a dull uh, unilateral headache, so it typically occurs on one side, sometimes both, and then it, it gradually increases throughout the day and it starts to throb. It affects your daily living, so you can't really function. Uh, it, it's difficult to work. Mm -hmm. And then it's associated with things like nausea, vomiting, and uh, blurry vision. Mm -hmm. and, and typically people just wanna be in like a dark room yeah. uh, with no noise. And um, uh, one of the things that's, uh, you know, some people suffer complex migraines, yes. so they actually have like neurological symptoms, so they get weakness and numbness on one side. Oh, I can totally relate to that as well, unfortunately. Doctor, what are some of the things people can do, maybe at home, and at what point should people come in and see a doctor like yourself? Yeah, I think, you know, before you see a physician, you want to uh, keep a headache diary mm -hmm. and, you know, document certain uh, triggers, uh, certain things that, you know, trigger your migraines so that your doctor can better as assist you. And I think if you, you develop migraines that are affecting your daily living, you know, you really want to seek uh, a, a neurologist uh, because we do have medication and therapies now that can really re significantly reduce uh, your, your um your headache frequency and severity of that migraine. So should people seek out their primary doctor or a neurologist? Yeah, you know, I, I would always just advise my patients uh, uh, that are listening that, you know, we want to talk to your primary doctor, refer you to a neurologist uh, so that you can be uh, treated and diagnosed. And, you know, there's also uh, in a certain population, there are secondary causes for, mm -hmm. for the headache. So it's not necessarily a migraine, but it's caused by like a brain aneurysm oh. or arterial venous malformation. So, you know, before we just want to say that we have migraines, we want to be properly diagnosed by the neurologist and rule out these secondary things. Absolutely. You know, headaches, like you mentioned, can be cured with things Things like ibuprofen you can get over the counter, but you know, migraines are a different issue. You need prescription strength medication. Yeah, so the great things about migraines over the last couple of years, we've developed migraine specific medications. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the past, when I used to see patients, I'd have to prescribe them things that, you know, were known to reduce uh, headaches like blood pressure medications and anti seizure medications and antidepressants. But now, you know, I can prescribe them specific medication that, 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 that treat the migraine yeah. so, you know, they don't have to have all those secondary side effects. So these, these medications now really work and they, they typically don't have many side effects. Yeah, and I can tell you, they greatly improve quality of life. I can attest to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Wozni. And you can find all of the information we just heard on this segment on our website, kcalnews.com slash scene on TV. And we'll be right back after the break.